Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Digilog Collection Series. Uh, in this one I want to go back a little bit more in time than usual, specifically to the 1970s and beginning of 1970s and talk about uh, PDP-11. Uh, this was digital DEX um, continuation after their successful mini computer called PDP-8, which was a 12-bit um, uh, based mini computer. The PD, PD, PDP-11 was launched in 1970 and had a fairly long uh, shelf lifetime. Uh, DEX sold it throughout the 70s, the 80s and, and the 90s. Uh, it was very successful for them. They sold anywhere between 600,000 and, and 1 million units. Um, it was um, uh, a very powerful machine for the time. Uh, the PDP stands for Programmable Data Processor or Program Data Processor. Um, the main PDP-11 actually is the name of the processor and the architecture associated with it. But it's the same, it's synonym to uh, the name of the entire series of the machines. And uh, uh, when you say you have a PDP-11 uh, computer, it, it generally means you have, um, you have a working, working computer, not just a processor. Um, let's talk a little bit about the architecture and what it can do. So like I mentioned, it is a 16-bit um, uh, microprocessor. Um, Originally, when it was launched in 1970, it ran at about 1.25 megahertz, which is quite a lot for the time. Um, the model that I have right here, we're gonna use today, um, it's um, running at about 3.3 uh, megahertz. This is a PDP 11 slash 23 um, model, and this specific one has 256 um, kilobytes of memory installed, and we'll see that later. And um, um, it, it, because um, PDP-11 measures memory in 16-bit words, um, when you read documentation and see people online talking about it, they also talk about kilowatts. So a 256 kilobytes machine is 128 kilowatts uh, machine. It means the same thing. Um, the PDP-11 architecture had few advances for its time that were fairly important and were later incorporated in other line of processors such as the Intel 8086 or the um, Z-Log Z80. Um, for example, it's, it, it had what today we call an orthogonal addressing mode. So an instruction could access, um, the same instruction uh, coding could access um, uh, a register or a memory, um, uh, a source of destination, and those were encoded just using three bits um, for the type of source, three bits for the type of destination. So uh, whether you want to move the data from register to memory, from memory to memory, or to memory to register, and so on, uh, you use the same instruction. That, that made it for fairly easy programming and uh, fairly compact code. Um, the PDP-11 did not have a um, dedicated input-output instruction set, so what, what it uses is uh, memory mapped um, input output. So certain addresses were, for example, mapped as a serial input output uh, and so on. So just by output, outputting some data to a certain memory address, that actually went out the wire. And, and we'll, as we see that later today, um, we can use it for serial communication. Obviously, during the lifetime of the PDP-11, uh, digital had a lot of features and, and improvement. Um, initially, the, the processors were very large um, as, as, as time has, they use uh, LSI, large-scale integration, um, to have fewer and fewer chips on, on the board, on the CPU board, uh, up until, you know, the very late you could have a whole PDP level on, on, on a single chip. Um, there were many, many models of uh, PDP uh, 11 released in the wild, and um, DEC has a lot of names for them, like, for example, PDP 11-03, slash 23 as this one here, slash 70, and so on. And they, there are many ways to characterize them, but one, one important um, differentiation between those is that early models have what we call a um, unibus architecture, and later models have what we call a Qbus architecture. And the Qbus architecture is basically almost identical to the unibus, except it's, it, the wires are, uh, the pathways are redesigned 
to um, use multiplexing, to use data and address on uh, the same wire, therefore making the bot smaller, card smaller, cheaper to produce, and so on. So if you, um, when you have um, uh, add-ons for, um, for for the PDP level machine, you have to make sure that if they are they are unibus, you, have, you can only put them on a unibus PDP, and, and you have a Qbus card, you can only work a Qbus uh, PDP. Um, and over time, as time passed, um, they increased the size of the uh, address bus on the Q bus just to allow for more memory, um, for more address lines, so therefore more memory could be accessed by, by, by a machine up to like uh, 22 bits um, address space. So how do they look out there in the wild? Well, while they were called mini computers, don't be fooled by that. The machines were fairly large, about as, as tall as a human. Mostly because the various components themselves were also large. To a central unit containing the processor, you could attach, for example, a tape drive called deck tape, a hard disk drive, which then had removable platters, or uh, an 8 inch floppy drive. But let's go back to what we have. Okay, so you can see in the front panel. Um, we have, on this specific model, the 11 slash 23, we have three buttons, which is the restart or the reset button, the halt, which starts the ORT, we'll talk about that later, and the auxiliary on-off power, which what it does, it just gives power to, uh, allows the power supply to be a uh, pass-through so that you can um, power other modules that will be in a, in a PDP-11 uh, stack. From the back, um, the main processor unit, which is what we have here, it has um, the power supply, which is this long uh, bit over here with a power intake, uh, two big fans which are aimed to cool the, the card area. Um, the important thing is this is the this is the QBus system right here. So um, it's a dual width, so I can put two basically cards. And I believe they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, slots and uh, the the bus is bidirectional, so all, all the car you, you put all the cards in it and they'll talk to each other. So uh, that we have in this system, particularly, I have three cards. Uh, the top one is the CPU uh, card with a PDP 11 processor and um, the 7, 74LS circuitry. Underneath, I have a memory card, I'll show those later. And further underneath that, I have a uh, quad uh, serial uh, card. And I have these wires in the back um, that allow me to serially connect to um, to my terminal or the tape drive uh, or um, anything of a kind. The design is basically um, also reminiscent of the um, uh, S100 machines where you have just a, ba a back plane uh, that is your bus and then everything else connects to that and it's um, equal right citizen to your system. You'll notice that this version of PDP-11 does not have the blinking lights and the multiple number of switches that usually adorn the front of other uh, deck machines such as PDP-8 and early uh, PDP-11. That is because this machine has something called ODT or uh, Online Debug Tool or how I heard it called, Octal Debugging Technique. It's basically a piece of software that happens to be written in the firmware of this product and uh, later comes in the um, ship to the RTS operating system from digital that basically lets you do what you would otherwise do with the switches in front of the older machines. It basically puts the processor in a special debugging mode where you can edit memory, um, change the values of registers and, 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 um, and, and, and execute from certain addresses. Uh, the, the reason, the way you enter in uh, ODT mode is either by executing the uh, HALT instruction or simply by flipping the uh, HALT switch in front of this uh, machine. Alright, so let's see um, what we can do with it. I've already connected um, the PDP-11 to um, this beautiful Space Age uh, layer signal terminal um, using the 25 pin serial cable. So I'm gonna turn on the uh, terminal first and wait for the um, display to turn on. There you go, we have a cursor. Now I'm gonna turn on the PDP-11 from the back. It's gonna be a little bit loud, has very big fans. 
Um, there we go. We have a display that now shows um, the ODD cursor and it waits for us to input something. So even though we do not have an operating system loaded in the machine just yet, just because we have the ODT running, we can operate the machine uh, right now. Uh, one thing, important thing to mention before going further, is that the number base used in PDP-11 and ODT is octal. So all numbers you see on the screen are octal numbers. Uh, and in fact, um, if we try to input any number that's larger than seven, uh, like eight or nine, the ODT will throw out an, an uh, error message that really only accepts anything between zero and seven. While we are running in ODT mode, the CPU is in a special debug mode, such that it's instruction point that does not actually move. So there are three main things we can do while here. Well, one is we can change the value at the memory location by typing a memory location such as this, uh, followed by slash, and it displays the old memory content. So let's say we want to input a, a new value in there, and we can press return. Um, the second thing we can do is we can change the value of any of the all eight purpose uh, general purpose registers by typing R followed by a register number. So for example, we want to change the value of R5. Uh, same thing, R5 slash. It tells us the R5 has value 1653 inside, and we want to put 4567, and press enter. And the last thing that we can do is we can give control back to the main CPU uh, by telling it to, uh, to set the instruction pointer to a specific value. Uh, we do that by typing the address we want to start executing uh, from, followed by G. So let's type a single, a simple program that just prints uh, a letter uh, on the screen, uh, basically sends it through the serial terminal all the way uh, uh, from, from, the, um, from the PDP-11 to, to, to the terminal. Like I mentioned before, uh, if you remember, the PDP-11 uses memory mapped I.O. So certain memory addresses are used um, for um, serial communication, and that's the address we're gonna write a value to. So uh, our, our program basically, it's made of two instructions. One is to move character A uh, to the serial port, and second to go back to the previous instruction. So let, let's start encoding the program from address 1000. So I'm gonna type it here pretty fast. Uh, I'm gonna replace that. Um, with the instruction code, this has been assembled before, so I know what I know what the hex file is to type. Oh, sorry, um, typing. Um, uh, there is a difference between line feed and, and carriage return. Line feed allows you to keep entering um, um, addresses and, and increasing memory, keep entering values of the increasing memory ad uh, addresses, whereas return gets you back to the ODT cursor. So if you press line feed now. Now I'm editing uh, address uh, 1002. So this is character A. Uh, next, next part of the instruction, uh, it's the actual port, the serial port that we're gonna send this letter to. Uh, then we want to encode the jump to itself. Uh, one more, and we want to jump back to 1000. And now we finish entering the program, so I'm gonna press return it back to the ODT uh, con console. Uh, we want to change the value of R7, so type R7, and we want to put out a thousand, we want to jump from there. And we also want to disable the interrupts, so it's RS, and we change that to 340. And then we, like I said, we can input the address we want to jump to, whether it's a thousand, we're starting coding our program from, and letter G. And as you can see, our program is executing, and it's sending a bunch of A's, um, to the, um, from the PTP 11 to uh, the screen. And since we disabled the interrupts, we can't actually uh, get back control. We have to reset. Okay, but what can you actually do with the PTP 11 system other than typing a bunch of A's on the terminal, which, you know, gets old after a while? Well, even with the bare bone system as this one is, which is basically just the central unit of the memory and the processor, and there are a few things you can have fun with. So, like I mentioned before, inside here I have a um, four port serial uh, card, which allows me to connect more than one serial connection. That is useful because one serial connection can go to my terminal, and the second one, um, I can have a, um, a smaller serial, serial port 
and then I can go from that to USB and from USB to a, to a, to a laptop or a computer where I can run a tape emulator. And in fact, I've done that before and you can find on the net uh, either the RTS uh, operating system as, as a tape uh, air high or um, different um, um, testing tools and then um, you, or you'll have to uh, write a simple program it's no more than about 10, 12 instructions uh, in ODT mode that what does it's, it, it basically acts as a boot uh, loader um, for loading the operating system through the serial cable from, from your laptop, from your emulator into here and um, of course if you reset the machine you have to input that uh, bootloader again but you can actually load um, an RTS 11 operating system straight which was the, uh, the operating system released by digital for the PDP 11 on the machine without having any expensive and very large such as tape drives, uh, floppy disks um, uh, and so on um, the other thing you can do is you can get yourself a, um, uh, a tape drive, an actual TU-58 uh, uh, tape drive or a um, hard disk drive um, and then to interface with that you'll need a, um, a special uh, card, um, a Cubus card in, in, my, in my configuration that has a, a bootloader in its ROM that will be able to boot the operating system from the said tape drive, um, floppy disk, or the hard disk drive. However, those tend to be fairly rare to find on sites such as eBay, um, and they tend to be fairly prices, pricey, around 500 or so dollars um, as of today. Um, even if you find those, you still have to look for um, the, the interface card with the bootable uh, ROM, as well as um, all kinds of cables, and, and, and not only that, but the media itself, the actual um, uh, operating system, for example, on a tape, which is even 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 more rare. So going via uh, tape uh, emulator, a TU-58, you can you just search it up on Google, and there, there are a few sites that uh, you can download the compiles for Windows, Linux, uh, Mac, um, and so on. It's, it's a good, um, good option to try to, you know, uh, use those machine uh, you know, something more advanced than just typing A's on, on the terminal. Okay, well, I hope this answers some of your questions you might have had about the uh, PDP-11 machine and what is it made of and how to connect to it, how to use it, and so on. And I hope um, that I'll eventually get my hands on a um, uh, disk, an actual physical uh, disk unit so I can load and show how you load uh, the operating system and boot the machine properly without an emulator. Um, as usual, thank you very much for watching my video, uh, subscribe to my channel, and see you soon.